Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and today is Monday, August 20th, 2018. In this video, I wanted to do an update on the broad markets, just a brief update there, look at some developments that I'm watching for, some that have actually occurred already since the open today or since last week. And we'll, uh, I'd like to you know, just touch on a few trade ideas that stand out right now, whether they're official or unofficial trades. So start out with the Apple. This is a 60 minute chart of Apple. Let me pull this down a little so you can, yeah, you can make out. Oh yeah, the time frame is right up here. If I don't discuss it, your, your ticker symbols here, here, time frame right here. That's an hourly chart. And you also have the uh, watermark right here, the symbol in the background there. Um, right after the open today, I posted this chart, uh, this trend line here. So this is what I'm watching on Apple. Apple, as most of you know, it's the world's largest company, first company ever to reach a trillion dollar market cap. Uh, just recently did that. And it's also, um, more importantly, the largest component of both the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100. So uh, this stock has a big impact on the broad markets in the major indices. And what I pointed out uh, is that I think uh, I said it, I think it's finally time. I've had a lot of inquiries on Apple since they beat earnings, but there was no uh, nothing in the chart to, to really justify a short on Apple or a pullback. Um, but uh, I did post this in the trading room this morning. Actually, this was the chart in the trading room. So stating a uh, you know break of this trend line is likely to trigger pullback in Apple. You can see it's uh, very overbought here on the RSI. We had pretty much flat line divergence on the RSI, negative divergence on the PPO. Last time we had a divergent high was back here. Again, this was the chart from this morning uh, for the gold members in the trading room. And this is, uh, here's that last pullback. And that was good for about a, you know, 7% drop. And since that post today, we've broken down and we did so impulsively. That's another thing. We can see some pretty decent volume bars uh, and this 60 minute candle is still working on that volume bar. So this, this volume bar will increase from here. So you have an impulsive breakdown, meaning big red candle below that trend line. That's a sell signal. And you can see my two targets right here. Um, these are minimum targets. Uh, so, you know, if you're looking to short Apple or you did on that breakdown, 210.30, you know, from where we broke down today, you know, that's that's good for about a 3% trade on Apple. And that's going to have an impact or it should have an impact. Again, assuming if this plays out the way I expect, uh, that should have an impact on both QQQ and SPY and really everything else. Uh, the rest of the market tends to follow the large caps. If they go down, it'll probably bring the mid and small caps down with it. And uh, quite likely we could continue down here to about that 206.12 level. We'll take it from there. Uh, right now, the charts are what I call stacked. And what I mean by that is when I have, uh, yeah, you know, if you follow me for a while, you know, sometimes I'm all over the place. I have, I'll talk about being bullish long-term on the long-term time frames or um, you know seeing the trend is bullish but then near term I have a bearish expectation uh, and that all depends on the time frame of these charts so we can go down to a 15 minute chart 60 minute chart and this is a, a you know one of my preferred swing trading time frames I like to swing these rips and dips on the 60 minute chart even if we're in an uptrend like we have been for the last few months uh, there's still plenty of opportunities both on the long and on the short side uh, for swing trading and you know largely I go off these divergent highs and lows I look at trend line breaks support and resistance so this is the near-term trend and I've been uh, for a couple weeks now near-term bearish and still am and again this this could have lar longer implications now what I mean by the charts are stacked so we had this divergent high most recently we've had a series of divergent highs this was a divergent high right here this was a divergent high this was a divergent high and when we go out in the long-term time frame now we only recently had a divergent high. We didn't have a divergent high at this point right here on the daily time frame. Well, we did on the 60 minute chart, but not on the daily time frame. At that point, you can see, um, you know, you know what, actually take it back. We could say we had it here like that. Uh, yeah, so I, I stand corrected. We did have divergence there. This is just a simply an extension. I should have included that one there. I had moved my divergence lines and just noticed that as I was doing the video. So there it is. It's a series of consecutive divergent highs. One, two, three. Um, and most importantly, it's one large divergence because uh, none of these have been taken out. The, the PPO and the RSI continue to make lower lows. So this is what I mean by the charts are stacked because if we had negative divergence on the 60 minute time frame, but not on the daily, that would only be good in my opinion. Um, and I'm maybe oversimplifying it here. You don't always have to have divergence for a correction or a rally, um, but it does help. 
where I'm going with this is if uh, the 60 minute chart or the 15 minute charts had some negative divergence, but we didn't have any on the daily, at best I'd be looking for a quick pullback trade and then get out. However, with the charts being stacked, meaning we go from the 15 minutes or 60 minute charts to the daily all the way out here to the weekly charts and we have negative divergence across the board uh consider it like dominoes if you will where uh so the 60 minute chart starts to play out as it's been so far nothing big we don't have very impulsive selling yet but let's say this continues to work its way down uh i think it will then that has the potential to trigger. We come out here to the daily chart. You see this yellow trend line right here. We can look at it a different way right here. This white trend line is the same one. So now if those 60 minute divergences I just mentioned continue to play out for more downside, that breakout in Apple, which will un undoubtedly have an impact on QQQ plays out, then that should take us down below this trend line on the daily chart. That gives us a more powerful sell signal uh, and that would most likely take us down here to this trend line. And if that happens, uh, again, we have a weekly trend line to watch as well. So that's probably, I believe, yeah, that orange trend line I can tell you is this same trend line on the weekly. So right now, let's keep it simple. I'm looking for a pullback to this long-term trend line that comes off the 2015 lows in QQQ. And if you replicate it on the NASDAQ 100 and DX index, you'll see that trend line generated here off the early 2016 lows. It's the same exact trend line. We just had a mini crash in QQQ that, that day right there. Uh, or that week, uh, you know, yeah, one day that didn't have, uh, happen in NDX, the actual index itself. So there it is. Um, and now, point being, if we come down there, I would expect a reaction. Uh, that would be my expectation. But uh, uh, ultimately, these divergences are very likely to play out. Now, they can extend. There's certainly plenty of room for the NASDAQ to push higher and have these divergences extend without being taken out. So keep that in mind. So all, I guess all I'm trying to say is that would be our a natural support level where we're likely to get a bounce. Uh, wouldn't surprise me to see the queues overshoot that intra week, meaning throughout it, you know, one day, maybe two days, but then snap back and close up on it or, or above it at the end of the week. That's all that matters on the weekly time frame here is the, uh, the, the weekly close, what happens to end and close Friday. Um, now, I'll also say this wedge could possibly break down. There's nothing to say because that is support that we have to stop there and have to have another reaction. I'm just saying that's somewhere where a logical place to either cover uh, or maybe lower stops. If you're expecting a breakdown of that level, there's also a key moving average a 200 day, which is also the 40 week moving average comes in right with that trend line. I mean, you almost, it's so perfect. You have to move the trend line to see it. See that red level, that red line. That is the, the 40 week moving average on this chart. It does a pretty good job of defining bullish and bearish trends. Look at it right there. Look what happened when they both broke. We had trend line break, the, the primary trend line at that time, and that 40 week, and we had a you know 26% drop now off the highs there. Uh, snap back above it briefly, came back below it. But since then, during volatile periods, you will slice through these EMAs, these are, are any simple, whether you're using a simple or an exponential moving average. That's not unusual because volatility is spiked up. You have these big swings. But once trading normalizes and you get a trend, that's when that trend line does a good job or that uh, uh, moving average, in this case, the uh, 40 week or 200 day moving average does a good job of defining the uptrends. And so a break of that in conjunction with a break of this trend line, that's a that's increases the chance of that uh, being a, a good long term or swing sell signal because you've broken now two well watched levels of support. So there's some traders that just focus on moving averages, some that just focus on trend lines, some using Fibonacci retracements, Elliott Wave. There's all different disciplines and technical analysis. And so my book, the more check marks you get for a buyer sell signal, the better. It's as simple as that. OK, so if I'm correct and we're going lower, uh, where are we going? Well, let's look at What's happened in the past, this was my first target zone before and second target era, these lines. I need to need to update this chart. But but basically, let's look for these reaction lows. I still think we'll probably come down here and visit this level at least and wouldn't be surprised to see this uh, third target zone being hit. And again, I'm at this point, because what I just showed you, these 60 minute charts starting, if they do play out, they're going to trigger a breakdown on that daily chart. And that'll bring us down to that long or daily and or the weekly and bring us down to that longer term trend line, which uh, I'll try to give, it, give you that number right now to quantify it. Uh, let's move this line out of the way. Percentage terms, grab where we're at right now. Let's say it takes a few days to get down there. 
uh, you're talking about a nothing huge, about a 5% drop. And uh, I might have to play around with this trend line here. But yeah, we'll call it 5 6% drop, somewhere like there. And uh, we'll have to see what the charts look like at that time. In other words, the inter intraday charts confirm a bounce or indicate more downside likely. Um, there's nothing, again, to say that we have to hold support the next time this trend line is tested. And if it does give way, and this is something I still think we'll see in, in 2018, is a test of these lows back from uh, those two big corrections in the, uh, the beginning of the year. And that comes in around 152.84. Okay, moving along to the SPY, there's some P500. We also have uh, a divergences right here. We have about equal highs. The SPY technically hasn't punched up, <laughs> some, you know, to the surprise of a lot of people. Uh, if it punches up, makes a new high this week. I think actually it'll take Wednesday. Today's Monday. I was reading something over the weekend. Uh, if uh, Wednesday will mark the longest bull market in history, it'll be uh, exceed the one that started back in the, around 1990. Um, if we can uh, take out the highs. So, so far that was a high and they, the S&P 500 is a stock market. The NASDAQ 100 is not. And this is probably the best measure of the market and that's what they're looking at here. So again, it's just a st statistic, just a number. We're so darn close. Um, you know, again, it wouldn't shock me if we get up there, but let's let's see what happens with Apple. If Apple plays out, and, and just go back to Apple for a second, if that 60-minute plays out, you know, there's just a minor pullback there, but maybe we come in and we backtest this trend line. You can look at that trend line again, probably, yeah, I don't have it drawn out on the 15-minute chart. You could probably put a shorter-term time frame, but... Uh, this is going to make it hard for the S&P 500 to punch up to new highs, but it's not critical, especially with the S&P 500 because Apple is not nearly the heavy weighting uh, in the S&P 500 as it is in the NASDAQ 100. So I think any weakness in Apple will most likely put more pressure on QQQ. So uh, this, if, if this pullback to at least 210.30 does play out, um, it's still possible for the S&P 500 to make new highs if the other sectors are kicking it in gear. And a quick look at the SPY daily chart, similar trend line as to QQQ, except uh, SPY is far, pretty far above that trend line now. So bottom line of this SPY is comfortably above uh, uptrend line, this minor uptrend. This is not the primary bull market uptrend line, just an uptrend line off the uh, early April 2018 lows here. That's one to watch. So uh, I, I do believe with the divergences in place and everything else, the posture, the 60-minute uh, charts, that if the SPY gives us that punch up the new highs just to make it official, just to make everybody happy, um, then it will be a divergent high and it will most likely fail and probably be a great shorting up. And, you know, probably, sh you know, I'm not, not a big fan of trading the SPY or ES because there's so much diversity in there, whether you're bullish or bearish. When you go long, you're, you're going long the most bullish and the most bearish sectors and stocks of a you know, universe of 500 stocks, 11 different sectors in the S&P 500, whereas NASDAQ is much more concentrated, you know, almost two thirds in the NASDAQ is tech stocks alone. And, uh, and over half the returns are made up by just, uh, you know, the top 10 or so stocks. So, there it is. That's what SPY looks like um, on a 60-minute chart here. And we do have divergence uh, or potential divergence. We had divergence at this most recent high right here. That was negative divergence. And all I've done is extend this divergence line right here to say that if the SPY wants to eke on up and to a marginal new high here, pop on up like this in reverse, which would be my expectation, give us the longest bull market in history, let let the um, you know CNBC uh, cheer that headline for all it's worth, and then see a reversal, which I do think we'll get. Um, quick look at the futures course uh, for you uh, futures traders. Uh, we had a divergent high here in the NASDAQ one, and NQ, these are the NQ E-mini chart 60 minute uh, time frame. Uh, divergent low led to this rally right here. We had a divergent high so far. That divergent high is playing out for a correction, a pullback in the NASDAQ. Nothing impulsive yet, but we are moving lower. The near term downtrend is bearish. And again, that uh, was indicated by the uh, divergent high, just like we had a divergent high there, divergent low there, divergent low right here. Uh, that's the swing trading time frame. Uh, let's see here. Uh, SPY, here's ES, the NASDAQ 100, I'm sorry, the S&P 500. 
E-mini futures, and let's try to zoom in a little bit. You can see I've covered this chart quite a bit. Let's just zoom in a little tighter to the most recent action. There's that rising wedge I just showed you on SPY. You can see the negative divergence on the 60-minute chart, and it shows pretty clear here on ES. So what we need to do, if you look closely at the lines that I have here, uh, two things I'm watching on uh, the S&P 500 E-mini futures. I'm watching this uptrend line, which we're testing right now, as well as this 2852-ish level right here. Uh, support and you can see the reactions uh, quite a bit of reactions when you go back in time here so this is what I'm watching so really any more downside right now the futures are about flat up 0.02 let me give it to you in spy numbers spy is also up 0.02 percent uh, they're not always they usually don't match because they're uh, different opening hours on the on the contracts each day but uh, that's it. So what you pretty much, if you see much more downside, if the SPY was, were to turn red today or in the next couple of days and drop, um, not much. Again, not much, especially in ES. We don't see it here, and that's why I use both of these charts. I can't really draw that well of a trend line. Uh, I could go, let's see, we'll try it here. It's it's very similar. There it is. So we're dancing on that trend line right now. Um maybe a hair below it on SPY, but we don't have any impulsive selling. But if should we get a solid red candle, that could like would likely trigger um, the next wave of selling. Okay, and targets. Uh, targets remain the, the targets from the last uh, divergent high there where, you know, we had the uh, NASDAQ 100, the NQE minis went on to hit my second target to the penny and reversed, and SPY was much stronger. So the last correction in QQQ was really tech related. And isolated more to QQQ. We did have a little bit of a pullback here in, in SPY, but here's what we're looking at. Uh, these same target levels. This one, I, need, I probably should move these lines, but right here, this is a pretty key support level. I've talked about this quite a bit. This was a recent breakout to new highs, new multi-month highs, not all-time highs, but uh, we had that one high earlier in the year, which was just overhead right now. So like I said, you know, you flip a coin, whether we're going to go ahead and punch up through there, make that new high. And if we do, uh, I think we'd reverse. And uh, so this trend line is what I'm watching right now. I'm watching this trend line. And if we break it, maybe we back test it as well and go on to make that new high. There's a lot of possibilities there. Like I'm, I'm, all I'm trying to tell you is the very, very near term, if we get that big red candle we get a sell signal then uh, we may not make those new highs and, and this is where the spy is going and at best I think if we uh, push higher we're going to go marginally higher and uh, then reverse uh, unless these divergences can get taken out unless we start to see some really bullish action coming in and what you want to watch if we do correct in the next week or so here uh, watch that 279.45 level I think it's an important level again goes back in time uh, as a, as a multi-month breakout and it's been tested several times. And I have a feeling that if we get there, uh, although we might get a reaction off it again, it would be the first time we've tagged it in a while. But if we get there, I think ultimately we're going to go on breakdown. And then you can see some of these targets. I really think we can come all the way down here to, uh, this this target zone down here, these, these levels here, about 274.28 down to 273.32. Let's do this. Let's go ahead and stop it here. I mentioned covering trade ideas. I'll I'll just keep this one wrapped up. You know, we're at the 18-minute mark. Make this a public video, um, and uh, then I'll do a follow-up uh, follow-up video. There are a lot of trade ideas I wanted to update. A lot of things that are popping right now, um, both longs and shorts. So I'll do that for members uh, shortly. Get that video out probably within the next uh, hour or so here. This has been Randy Finney with the Right Side of the Chart. Hope you enjoyed it.